coming to your India plans, um, there are, I think, plans to add a lot of uh, new hospitals and most of them are likely to be brownfield. So if you could explain your uh, India expansion strategy, also why brownfield? It's not that we are uh, uh, just focusing on uh, brownfield, but we'll also have green fields. But this is a strategy which we thought that can definitely reduce the, uh, the uh, overall investment. So along with the greenfield projects which we have, we want to add uh, maybe a percentage of that as uh, brownfield. So as you know, uh, the brownfield strategy uh, is where you already have an existing hospital, where you go into an OINTM agreement, uh, mostly or a lease agreement, where you are taking the premises and uh, sprucing up the facility and uh, adding equipments. So that uh, may cost you maybe uh, 15, 20 lakhs of rupees per bed. Whereas if you are going for a new hospital bed, depending on the uh, land price, it can vary from 80 lakhs to one crore. So that huge difference is there and definitely you'll have to pay a, a lease rental or a percentage of uh, the uh, top line. But looking at everything, as we want to reduce the investment, further investment and reduce capex, we thought that this will be a good strategy, especially in areas where we already have a good presence. So you are also open to the uh, ONM model, right? I mean, where That's someone right. owns the real estate and has a hospital in place. Uh, so Very for true. that, how, which are the cities or what categories of cities would you be targeting? Right. So we would like to look at uh, hospitals uh, for such activities around the place where we have already existing hospitals. For example, Bangalore, we have uh, three hospitals there already. So it will be very convenient to have hospitals in uh, cities around Bangalore. Like that in Kerala, we have uh, uh, in uh, uh, four cities, we have uh, already existing hospitals in Kochi, Calicut, uh, Kannur, Kotakal, so we want to have this around our existing hospitals. The reason why we are doing that is that there is a lot of synergy regarding the uh, availability of doctors as well as some of the investigations and all. With your model of having a mother hospital and feeder hospitals, um, how are uh, you thinking about scaling telemedicine or taking it to the uh, hinterland more? We are, uh, uh, I mean, in the process of... Uh, pushing virtual care and telemedicine to a great extent in all the geographies we operate. So we have a separate uh, vertical which has been created for that. And uh, uh, what we are doing is that uh, it's not only the consultation which we want to provide. See, when a patient, uh, what is the patient's journey? He has a problem and he wants to consult a doctor and get maybe tested as well as then get the medicines being delivered. This usually was happening in the physical mode. And this is where the patient comes to a clinic or a hospital, gets a consultation, go and do some testing, then uh, goes uh, to the pharmacy with the prescription of the doctor and then comes back home, which is half a day most of the time or sometimes even a full day. This is something which we want to reduce it to few hours where this patient has a consultation with a doctor on our platform. And then uh, the patient, uh, if at all he requires an investigation, we have the Aster labs which are being spread out, who will provide that home care and they will collect the phlebotomy and collect the blood or whatever is required. And then the doctor sees the result and the prescribes the medicine and the medicine is delivered to the houses of the people. Our pharmacy, which is now, we have over 100 pharmacies in India already. So from there, we'll be delivering the medicines to the patient's uh, houses. So this whole process, sitting at home within one or two hours, you can complete it, which is what the way in which world is moving. You mentioned pharmacies. Mm -hmm. What your outlook for the organized pharmacy sector in India? Secondly, would to also be open to uh, inorganic expansion in this space. Pharmacy, as I said, that this is part of our overall strategy. If you look at our GCC, we have clinics, pharmacy, and hospitals. That's an ecosystem 
which has worked <clears throat> very well for us. So we want to create in India also. So for us, it's part of an ecosystem. It is not just having pharmacies for the sake of having pharmacies. But along with that, we want to take the uh, I mean, opportunity to a next level where we can even go to places where we don't have hospitals. So our plan is to have this year 150 pharmacies being rolled out. We already have closed 100. And by next year, we'll have another 150. And in three-year period, we would like to have uh, 500 pharmacies. And the aim is by 2025 to have 650 pharmacies. Uh, responding to your question regarding uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, or inorganic uh, growth, we are uh, open for that. Uh, we are uh, uh, wanting to do that, not only for the pharmacies, even for the labs. We are looking at suitable opportunities of acquisitions in the areas where we have our strategic plan. You already mentioned uh, that India is going to be 40 to 50 percent of the group's turnover in a few years. Would you elaborate on that a bit and why the focus on India? Because uh, you're already profitable uh, in the GCC. So what is your expectation from the Indian market? What are the opportunities and challenges that you see? We uh, have been very successful in the GCC, especially in UAE, which is our main market. We have a very profitable business, both in the hospitals as well as clinics and pharmacies. But when you talk about 10 million population, which is UAE, uh, see, and when you look at India, which is 1.3 billion population, and UAE or GCC being a market where there is already some amount of saturation, and there are uh, there is sufficient uh, demand supply. When you look at India, the demand supply gap is huge. So we see that in the next 10, 15, 20 years, India is the opportunity. If you look at our uh, this year YTD EBITDA, already we have reached about 27% of the YTD EBITDA from India. We want to gradually bring it up to 30, 35, 40% as we go forward. Around the September quarter, a lot of hospitals and overall industry um, analysts had pointed out that 2022-23 is going to be better than the pre-pandemic years in terms of margins as well as revenues. So uh, has that changed with the third wave? Is there a change in the outlook for the hospitals industry? In India? Uh, I can't say about uh, uh, others, but for us, we see it as a, uh, as a positive, uh, as a, the future uh, in India, especially, you know, the uh, prospects are uh, very good and we are looking at very good growth in the next uh, uh, financial year as well as in the next, I mean, in, even in the present quarter. So we are very positive about the prospects in India. That's what we are seeing. And it should be the same with other uh, major players uh, as the uh, analysts have mentioned. Medical tourism, it has been hit. It was roughly 10% of the overall turnover of the large uh, corporate hospital chains in the country. Uh, yeah. What is your experience and uh, what would be your plan to you know, offset the revenue that was coming from that segment? Yeah, so this is something which has happened. So it is uh, now most of it is behind us. And uh, as you said, uh, there has been a significant fall in the MVT revenue. We also used to have around 10% MVT revenue, which came down significantly, almost to nil. Now it is slowly going up. So that will be a, an additional point where our uh, profits can increase. And what we have done is that uh, we have uh, uh, got one of the best persons available in the world. That's who was looking after the MVT for uh, Bruman Grand Hospital in Bangkok, which has uh, patients coming from 140 nationalities. So he's an American, David Boucher. He has joined us for uh, medical value travel in GCC and India. And he spends 15 days in India and he is looking how we can increase the uh, 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 flow of patients from different countries to our hospitals in India. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.